know, the, the music sort of draws you in. It, 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 it describes so many different pictures and images. You know? And so in a certain sense, you know, the, it's kind of like as we are playing it, we see these various images and then we try to project them together. You know, we, we are very lucky in music because the music is something that always is changing and there's always something more to discover in it. And, you know, sometimes people say, you know, well, you know, you, you play the same pieces, you know, for, for all your life. Is, isn't it boring? And so, actually, it is not because it is always changing. It's because music for us kind of is a reflection of our also musical experience. And so, as we go through life and have experiences, good and bad, it gives a different perspective and way of looking at the music. And sometimes these same images that we saw in the music maybe 10 years ago, now we look at them quite differently. Exactly. And now? Hopefully a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> Just that. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it's very interesting. Some pieces that we, we that, that I studied when I was young, mm -hmm. and either I thought, oh, not particularly interesting, or certain things I thought, oh, I don't know how to figure out, you know, it doesn't really make, make sense. And then I didn't play them, maybe sometimes even 20, 30 years. And then for some reason, either somebody asked me to program it, or I decided to, to play it. And it's a very funny uh, experience, because it seems like even though I hadn't thought about this piece at all, certain problems, ah, of course, yes, now I understand. This is what, what happens here. This, and it seems so much clearer, even though I didn't do anything. I mean, literally never thought about the piece and so on. So it's kind of like, you know, you, 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 you made some wine and you, you forgot about it. Yeah. And then you came back and if it didn't turn to vinegar. Yeah, you it tastes back. better. You said, oh my God, this is aged. So well, and so that is really, I think, for me, something now as I've gotten older is one of the most unusual things that I've discovered is so many pieces seem so much different and so much easier. Yes, there, there are pieces, there, there are new pieces that, that I play, and sometimes uh, people, you know, write write new pieces, and, and I find you know very very interesting. It is you know particularly interesting to to play a piece when the composer is alive. Yeah, of course. First of all, it's a little my goodness, scary. scary. And I always, what I ask them very often is, because I cannot compose, so the idea that somebody has a piece of paper and writes, I'm thinking, how do you know what to write? Exactly. So, you know, you use, and so I ask, when you write it, you must be hearing, but when we actually play it, is it what you expected? Exactly. <laughs> and some, they say, well, sometimes yes, sometimes no. But it's, you know, very interesting to say, you know, well, here, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not quite sure, you know, what did you mean here? And it's very nice to simply ask him. And he said, well, you know, you should do it this way. Or I was thinking of this. And so that is very, very interesting. Because otherwise, we're taking music and we're looking at it and trying from the indication, from these little dots and little lines and so on to think, what does he mean here? Or what did he want here? And it kind of depends, because some composers were very careful, in it, and others just, because it was all in their heads, they wrote it like on napkins. And since yeah. there, here, take it. Feel it. Yes. And play it. Yes. So it. it's a challenge, as you say, to um, play a live composer than one that passed away. Yes. It's so different, yes. so complicated. OK. The hall is fantastic. Yeah. The hall is fantastic. The sound is wonderful. I mean, you are, whoever did it is brilliant because to make such a beautiful hall is really quite difficult because very often halls, it doesn't matter how much money they put in there, how many experts and so on, sometimes the sound is you know, not quite right and so on. And even certain great halls, which are acoustic, sound is very good. Sometimes it's strange, for example, in Amsterdam, in the very famous Concertgebouw, which has one of the best acoustics in the world, on stage, you cannot hear very well. Okay. Which is very strange. When you're playing with the orchestra, you don't hear the, uh, the wind players, the maduros. Yeah. 
at all. It sounds like, it, like, are they playing? It's just the acoustic <laughs> on stage is strange. However, here on stage, it is very nice. I hear everything. So, but you hear there's a wonderfully warm sound. Yeah. And so this is really a, a great, it's a great hall. And I think also for the orchestra, it's fantastic that you can rehearse in this hall. Yeah. Because sometimes when there's a very good hall, the orchestra only goes there to play, and they rehearse at some other terrible place. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, for them, this is really a, a wonderful it's thing. It's a pleasure. Yes. It's a pleasure to yes. play here. Very nice to see. Okay. A lot of miles on the piano. <laughs> <laughs> you have so many miles to fly. <laughs> yes, you have to have a lot of miles on the piano. No, uh, but aside from that, from that, the, the important thing, at, uh, as whether you're a pianist or, or any other instrumentalist, the most important thing is you must really love music. Okay. I, I went to the Juilliard School in New York, and I remember when I was in the first year, I, was, I, was, I started very, very early, I was 16 years old, and the, uh, my teacher was a very famous old European Hungarian uh, great, great master, and she gave a speech which was very interesting. I still remember it today, even though it was maybe close to 45 years ago. And she said, the most important thing of all of you here at the Juilliard School, one of the top schools in the, in the world, is how many of you chose music for your life? Okay. And many people come out again. And then she said, and how many of you were chosen by music? A good question. She said, did you choose music because you will practice, become famous, and then play in Carnegie Hall? Or is music something you cannot live without? That it is so important for you that no matter what it is, you cannot live without music. And that really stuck with me because also I remember seeing everybody who had to be, you know, how many chose music? It was quite, quite proud, you know. Yeah, me. And when she made that question, you could almost feel in, in the hall so many people. <laughs> yeah, and, and a silence, I imagine. Yeah, a silence, because it really made you think, and I still remember that very, very much. That's a good advice. Yes, because really, you know, how much it, it's important to love what you do, because that is the most important thing. And music is a difficult life. You know, it is very, very difficult, and, you know, it's a, it, it's a lot of work, and it's very difficult to quantify. And, and so on, and there's so many people who play, 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 play instruments all over the world, but the important thing is, do you really love music? And so on, because in a certain sense, on the concert scene, you can hear when somebody really loves what they'd like to do. Yeah, and it's only not the passion, it's yes. the way that they express. Yes. You see Maestro Plata, everything he does with music, it is in his blood, it is like breathing. Yeah. There is no doubt that music chose him. Exactly. Because anything he does, whether he's playing violin, whether he's conducting, everything you can see, the, the, the passion for the music is and there. And he shared, so yeah, he you should, as audience you can feel it. Exactly, yes. And that's why you know, it is really such a wonderful privilege to work with him. And it, I see also the orchestra, you know, he, he has the young know, you know, like, you know, think of it this way, and, and so on. It is, he, he, he's pushing the musicians to play better because the music means everything to him. And, and he brings that to the orchestra, and the orchestra sees that to it. So that really is a, is, a, is, is a wonderful thing because you see the difference with somebody who is, rather than somebody who's just sort of, you know, like, you know, okay, well, yeah, okay, it's together, it's fine. No, he wants, he says, this music, yeah, here's the... <laughs> You know, because you've seen him here. <laughs> yes. you, you know exactly what so I'm talking about. Of, of, of course, because I saw him rehearsals, I saw him in the stage, and I have the pleasure to interview him. Yes. So, but when, you, you sense that passion for exactly, music. Exactly, and when, when, he, when he talks to you about any piece they're going to play, he He's makes you it, feel. He pulls you into it, Exactly. Yes. They, they are talking with us sometimes. So... You can feel the, the, the way he is telling the orchestra to play and the way he wants to them feel yes. the music yes. and, and let share with the people that patient and they feel just something. Mm -hmm. Aya, yesterday they told us, we, we asked him a question about uh, what do you think about this passion you put every concert? And he answered, passion is life. And passion is in the blood. So, yeah. But he's a perfect definition of 
music he chosen. chosen. <laughs> he did not choose. Maybe he thought oh. he chose. But, but now, actually, music chose him first. And it's a very good advice, yes. I think. Yes. Because for many people, it's, ah, OK, it's easy. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, or, well, I'll do it. I'll do it if I'm successful. If not, ah, never mind. Then I'll find something else. But no. Then it's probably, then Sometimes I saw that uh, I just tell people that when I watch them play in some, any kind of instrument on our piano, they make you know, that people see it so easy because this selection, no? you yes, know? Yes. And it's so easy. It's not complicated to play Rachmaninoff. Yes. You know? Sometimes well, you, you know, see someone. You know, you know, it, it is not really work because you know, the music is so fantastic. And you know, when you share this music and so on, yes, we work and prepare for it, but it is not work in the sense of trabajo. Yeah. No? Because it is for us, it is our life. No? Yeah. Because you enjoy. Yes. And it, when it's you so enjoy, magical, and every time you know it, it, we, we we have different emotions from it, and, and so on. And it's, it's Last week, the conductor told us sometimes I feel that the baton is like my magic stick. Yes. So I could make magic with the orchestra, the soloist, and everything. Yes. You bump it's and a suddenly, wow, yeah. exactly. Only two concertos in a minor key. And this was towards the end of his life, and I think it is one of his great great masterpieces. It foreshadows so much of Beethoven, and it is to me, you know, one of the most, you know, magical pieces of between the tension and the darkness of it, compared in the contrast to the beautiful moments of it. I think it is, you know, one of the the most complete masterworks of, of the twenty seven piano concertos. At last, on the list, we want to thank you for this interview. Very, very much. Hope you enjoy it. Absolutely. <laughs> we enjoyed it a lot.